Welcome to the Grad School Femme Touring Podcast. This is Dr. Yvette Martinez Vu, and I will be serving as your Femme Tour, providing you with tips and tricks and everything else you need to know to get into graduate school. For the past 10 years, I've been helping undergraduate students get into top graduate programs in their field, and I'm really excited to share this information with you too. Hi, everyone. So today I am going to talk to you about some organizational hacks. Um, If you know me, you know that a lot of people describe me as very organized, very type A, as someone who has her ish together. And um, I don't necessarily always feel that way. In fact, some days I feel like I'm running around like a chicken without a head. Uh, Some days it just feels like things are so hectic. In fact, that has been the case lately, ever since last week. um, When I attended a conference, I feel like I have so much going on and it's really hard to play catch up. And I'm sure that is probably the same for you. If you're in the semester system, in the quarter system, those of us in the quarter system, we're already going into midterms and it just feels like we're swamped with work and it's really easy to feel overwhelmed. And for me, I've developed some strategies over the years to help me manage my stress and manage my workload. And one of the reasons it's really important for me to do this is because I do have a chronic illness and, you know, it affects my tummy and it affects my head. Uh, So I get migraines, I get stomach aches, cramping, and other very uncomfortable symptoms. The more stressed I get, the more flare-ups I get. So I need to make sure that I remain kind of on top of things to manage my stress. So what do I do? What are some of my own kind of organizational hacks? One thing that I do has to do with um, keeping my inbox, email inbox clean. How do I do that? I use Gmail. So if you use another form of um, another, what is it, like email form, (laughs) then I'm sorry that I can't help you. But I'll tell you kind of what I do with Gmail. With Gmail, every time I get an email, I make sure that I label it. Uh, I label it whatever it is, you know, some sort of umbrella term. Uh, Let's say it's something related to my students and seminars. I'll have a seminar folder or seminar label. If it's something related to funding or the budgets that I manage, then I'll label it funding. If it's something related um, to... I even have actually a thank you folder, a folder of all the memos I've ever received from students thanking me because it's one of my favorite folders to go back and review. But anyway, so first thing I do, I get an email, I label it. Next thing I do is I add um, on Gmail, there's under um, settings, you can actually set uh, some stars as your options for um, another way that you can label your emails. So there's like a star, there's a little red exclamation mark, there's a purple question mark, there's a green check mark. And so what I do is I will... Um, add the little red exclamation mark for emails that are in my inbox that I know I have to respond to. I add a green check to those emails that I have already replied to, but that I still need in my inbox to reference for some reason. Sometimes it's like, oh, I've already responded, but I need to save that PDF in a folder. So I'll keep it in my inbox until I have the time to save that PDF. And I'll use like the purple question mark if it's an email that I can't quite answer yet because I need more info. So maybe I need to ask my colleague something before I respond back to this email. So I'll put a question mark, meaning I need more info. And so, okay, if an email comes in, I put a label on it. I figure out, okay, can I respond to it now or am I going to respond to it later and add a red exclamation mark or a purple question mark, etc.? Um, let's say I responded to it, I've labeled it, then what? Um, then I archive it. So every single email that I've responded to or that I don't need to respond to, but I no longer need to look at it, everything goes in the archive. Unless I know it's spam, then spam gets deleted. 
But if it's not spam, everything goes in my archive. You know why? Because then it's not visible in my inbox. But if it's in my archive, I can always access it later if I'm checking my search bar. That's why I love archiving emails. So please, 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 if you're one of the person that has 15,000 unread emails, please become accustomed to archiving your emails. In fact, go ahead and check all of your emails now, like select all of them and archive them all. And then from here on out, when you get new emails, make it a habit of, okay, let me read it, label it, respond to it, archive it, read, label, respond, archive, read, label, respond, archive. That that should be (laughs) a saying in your head so you can get into the habit of keeping your inbox clean. And I've done this for so long that my inbox, I mean, I usually by the end of the week, I can zero out my inbox. I'll have zero emails in my account, um, which people are always shocked to see when they look at my inbox. They're like, oh my gosh, why is it so clean? They think I don't get emails. I'm like, no, yes, I get hundreds of emails just like you, but I keep, I have an organizational system set up to keep it clean. And that helps me manage my stress because when I see a lot of unread emails, I get overwhelmed. (laughs) So that's one thing. Next thing is I use a calendar. Um, Most of you probably do this. Maybe you have a planner. Maybe it's an actual physical planner that you have to handwrite in. Or maybe you use um, Google Calendar like I do. Whatever it is that you do. Um, grow accustomed to having a schedule and a routine. Right now, more than ever, it's critical for us to develop routines to remain sane, to remain healthy, to survive. You know, like right now, for a lot of us, it's not that it's still not the time to thrive. So, if we're you're still just trying to survive, because so much is still going on for all of us. I mean. I can tell you, like, every one of us has been impacted by the pandemic and continues to be impacted by it. I've got students who have it, who have parents who have it, who colleagues with parents who have it. It's just, it's a mess. You might hear, FYI, (laughs) I'm recording from my bedroom. (laughs) I'm at the point where I'm just recording for the sake of making sure that my listeners have content but I'm, I don't have the capacity to edit my <laughs> podcast episodes. I don't even have the capacity to um, have prepped notes in advance. So I'm just sharing information with you off the cuff. Um, and if you hear my son in the background, you're going to hear him in the background. And it is what it is. But anyway, going back to the calendar and going back to routines and going back to the pandemic, it is critical for us to develop routines and to try to follow some sort of schedule to make sure that we get by. And so for me, I use Google Calendar and I add everything to my calendar. So based on my to-do list and what I know I need to get done in that week, I make time for every single task on my to-do list on my calendar. So if I were you, if you're a student or if you're someone, you know, working full time and you've got a lot of things going on, go create a to-do list, prioritize your to-do list, figure out what absolutely needs to get done this week. And then at the beginning of the week, plan out your schedule and make time and don't just make time I like to overestimate how long something's gonna take so if I think something's really realistically gonna take me an hour I'll put it in my calendar for an hour and a half just to give me some wiggle room sometimes I'm struggling so much to focus that I need that extra wiggle room that extra time Sometimes I don't and I'm on a roll and I'm really focused and it takes me half the time that I thought it would take me. So instead of taking me an hour and a half, it takes me 45 minutes and then I've got a 45 minute break. And so I'll go out and take a walk or 
hang out with my son or <laughs> or like hang out with my baby uh, my three my three month old whatever it is like I try to overestimate how long things take me um, some weeks I can't afford to overestimate because I just have so much to do that I just barely enough, have enough time to do everything but if I can I do that I overestimate how long things will take I put it in my calendar I schedule in everything down to the times that I eat right now I'm also pumping every three hours um, that's part of you know nursing my child breastfeeding my child and so I know every three hours I need a break I need a half hour break so it takes me 20 minutes to pump and then I've got to you know <laughs> wash pump parts and do all these things anyway point is I don't have a lot of time and so I schedule it all in and when I um, make time for appointments appointments with students appointments with staff that I supervise with colleagues that I am collaborating with I don't tell them my availability based on how many time slots I have available I tell them my availability based on my capacity to do work that day so some days I say I'm not available because I need that full day for all my admin work or uh, some days I say I'm not available because I already have four other meetings that day and I know after usually after four or five meetings in a day I am zoomed out so um, keep that in mind like figure out your own internal policies as you work on um updating your calendar try to schedule things in as much as possible and stick to your schedule to get by and to survive and to get all the things done that you need to get done so emailing is one thing scheduling calendars planners that's another thing also just something that I found out about recently that I thought was pretty neat if you're a pen and paper person I found out about this notebook called Rocketbook that seems really neat. Uh, just Google Rocketbook. Um, I, what I really like, I've actually started printing out. They have free printable pages and they have a free app. And if you use their pages, um, they have these little symbols and a QR code and you can you know, take notes or work on drawings or whatever it is that you need to work on scan it on the app and it gets automatically saved to a destination that you've already automatically set it to so it's kind of cool because I have certain symbols set to go straight to my google drive folders so I've got a google drive folder for my son for myself for my husband and so I'll just scan things um, and save them automatically there with their app so if you're a pen and paper person, check out Rocketbook, um, either the free printable pages or buy the actual notebook, which is pretty cool. The notebook, you can actually write out, um, write on the paper, but it's um, erasable. It, they give you a pen that's erasable, so it's kind of cool. If you wanted to try that out, just check it out. I'm not (laughs) they're not sponsoring me or anything and I actually haven't even used the actual notebook I've only used the free printable pages um because I'm trying to stick to my budget but if you're curious about it check it out it seems pretty neat uh so there's that now aside from emails aside from scheduling another thing that's really good to get accustomed to is to use some sort of app, website, software to help you with managing your tasks. So task management slash project management software or website or app. I have been using for many years this website called Kanban Flow, K-A-N-B-A-N-F-L-O-W. They have an app for it too. Uh, It's very similar to Trello. Trello is much more popular. And there are now numerous different sites that are comparable that use um, that like have like a similar um, what is it called like a similar concept behind it. 
Trello is the one that I feel like most people use and most people know about. Kanban flow is not, <laughs> not, as, not as common, but I've been using it for so long that now I'm kind of like grown to love it. So it's hard for me to think outside the box and try something different when that works. I'm like, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So anyway, figure out whether it's Trello, Kanban flow, something else, some sort of task management system that works for you. What I like about um, Kanban Flow and why I use it is because I can have different columns of tasks and I have a column that's titled this week, a column titled next week, and a column for this quarter, for this a- academic year, and I put my tasks there. So some things I know that are more long-term that I don't have to do now, I can worry about later, I put it in, in a column for this quarter or for this year, and some things that are urgent that I know I need to get done this week, I'll put in the, the in that column, in its perspective column, and I um, color code them based on the types of tasks they are. So I've got like financial budget related tasks, I've got tasks related to students, to seminars, um, administrative slash record keeping, uh, staffs and supervising, so um, depending on the different aspects of my job, I color code them. And so I'll, I'll see like, oh, wow, I have a lot of green this week. That means I'm doing a lot of admin work this week. Or wow, I have a lot of yellow tasks this week. That means I've got a lot going on with my students and my seminars. So it's nice to be able to visually see my task and what I have going on for that week. And I also prioritize them um, so that way I know exactly what tasks absolutely have to get done each week. You can add deadlines, you can add bullets, you can add subtasks, you can assign it to someone. So it's it's pretty neat how much you can do with a project management website or app. Uh, so just check it out, check out one of them and test it out. Or, you know, some folks are, again, if you're pen and paper and post-its work for you, then figure out a post-it system. Or you could just use post-its on your computer, but make sure that it's something that is set up so that it's functional and works for you. So figure out your emails, figure out your calendar, figure out how you're going to manage your to-do list. And make it so that you're not having to keep things in your head. Like try to clear out your headspace. I used to freak out a lot and stress over things and it would keep me up at night. And I'd be worried, am I going to remember this the next day? I have a horrible memory as it is. And I, as I've worked with more and more students, I've actually encountered folks who don't use planners who keep everything in their head. I have actually met students that where they're like, where I will meet with them and I'll give them some suggestions and some tasks and things to do and they don't write anything down. And then I tell them, are you sure you don't want to write it down? Are you sure you're going to remember? And they're like, no, 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 Dr. Yvette, I've got it. Like, I'm going to remember. It's all in my head. I'm good. And again, I repeat, are you sure? Here, here, I'll give you a sheet of paper and a pen to use. And nope, they're like, I'm good. If you're that kind of student, okay, kudos to you. But at some point, you're going to want to set up a system because no matter what, when you get to grad school and you're juggling multiple projects, um, it gets harder. It gets harder to keep everything in your head. You don't want to be staying up at night like I would, stressing out over things, wondering or if you're going to remember it the next day. So now because I have the system in place, I know, okay, when in doubt, put it on my to-do list. Once it's on my to-do list, at the beginning of the week, I'm going to check my to-do list. And from my to-do list, it's going to go on my calendar. What's on my calendar, I'm going to make time for it. Um, so even my calendar has time for emails. So I don't stress out over my emails as much as before, because I know I'm not going to check my email at this time. It's not, it's not on my schedule to check my emails right now. So I'm going to wait and I'll answer that person later on in the afternoon when I've designated some time to do that. 
and I even turn off my um, notifications so that I'm not checking emails at odd hours in the day, like when I'm having dinner with my family and so on. So what else is an organizational hack? I'm trying to think that is helping me out. Trying to think. I definitely, I feel like I, I rely on keeping my inbox clean. I rely on putting everything on my calendar. When in doubt, add things to my to-do list. Um, another thing I do is I keep all of my notes in one place. So for instance, all of my staff notes, uh, when I have, you know, I'm a facilitator staff meetings, I keep them all in one Google Doc. And when I use Google Docs, I actually, I love create using the table of contents on Google Docs. So I create headings, uh, heading two, heading three, whatever number heading it is. Uh, and based on those headings, I'll create a table of contents. So all of my notes are organized by quarters. I think according to quarters, since I'm on the quarter system. So all of my staff meetings are organized by quarters and within the quarters, those are like the larger headings. I have subheadings based on the dates of the meetings that I have. And so I have that for staff meetings. I have that for one-on-ones that I keep with students. So I'll take notes of meetings that I've had with students. So that way, next time I meet with them, I'll quickly pull up my previous notes from the last time I saw them. That way I'm reminded, oh, that's what was going on with them before. Um, So note-taking and keeping it all in one place has helped. Um, I do that also, like I use Google Team Drive and I use that both for work and for my own personal docs. And uh, I'm a big fan of just having a system and organizing your files. I know some folks who use Google Docs and oof, they don't have folders. (laughs) Or at least that's what it seems like when I've kind of peaked peeked, you know, uh, peeked at their computers while they're searching for stuff and they're spending so much time on the search bar looking for things. Um, when, you know, just an hour or two of you sitting down to try to organize things will save you that much more time later on. And so for work, everything that any kind of Google form, Google spreadsheet, Google doc that I create, Again, it always has to have a folder that it goes in. Just like with my emails, every email has to have a label. Same thing when you, when you create any kind of note-taking doc or spreadsheet that you need. Make sure that it goes in some sort of folder and that that folder is, you know, organized within like broad umbrella terms so that you can easily find it in the future. When I was in undergrad, the way that I would organize my folders were by the quarters um, or by the term. So um, I would put um, year one, year two, year three, year four for undergrad. And then within year one, I had fall, winter, spring, summer. Year two, fall, winter, spring, summer. Year three and year four. And then within those fall, winter, spring, summer, then I would put the the names of the courses. So English 101, English 102, English 103. Um, And then I'd put the documents. And I actually still have all of my undergrad docs, believe it or not, in my laptop. I have a very, very old laptop. And I've got stuff from undergrad and I've got stuff from grad school. So it's kind of wild. I forget sometimes that I have that stuff, but I I still have it. I can still access things because I've had them organized for so in that way for so long. So yeah, organizing your folders, organizing your desktop, organizing things on Google Drive. Nowadays, I don't even rely on my desktop because... I've made it a habit to save everything on my team drive. Uh, I, I just happen to like that because I've had instances where I've lost material and I've seen, I've witnessed so many of my own close friends lose material, lose dissertations, dissertation chapters, new research that they're doing and how painful it is to lose 
material that you've worked so hard on that now it's just force of habit. Anything I do, I do it on the drive. That way, if something happens to my computer, I know it's saved on the cloud and that I'll be able to access it in the future. So that's another hack is saving all of your documents in folders, ideally within some sort of I use Google Team Drive, that's my preference. I, I just happen to be a Google person, but it could be on Box or it can be on some other form of cloud system that works for you. So that has been helpful. And then just generally speaking, like thinking about things as like everything has to find, has to have a home. Even within my home, I think about all the things that I've accumulated and I, you know, if I ever purchase something new, I think, okay, do I have space for it? If I don't have space for it, where can I make space or what do I need to get rid of in order to make space for it? And so like, if I were to buy myself a new article of clothing or some new earrings or whatever it is, (laughs) and I don't have space for it, I... I think to myself, okay, it's time to get rid of some stuff if I want to make room for this this something new. And my son has actually learned this as a, I guess it's like a lifestyle for him because now he knows every time he's got a birthday and he gets a lot of birthday presents, he he's ready. He's like, oh, so we're going to like go through my room and make space and find things to donate so that I have room for my new presents. I tell him, yep, that's right. If you don't have room for it, <laughs> you can't keep it. Um, so that's what I try to do at home too, is try to make space for things, try to make room for things, try to designate time um, for chores and things like that, just to stay on top of things because it's really easy with with a family, with two kids, um, with a full-time job and other collaborations and commitments to just kind of let things fall off the plate. (sighs) Yeah. I think that's all I'm going to share for today because that is already more than enough. Even if you just try out one of the things that I've mentioned, like tackle your emails or tackle your calendar or tackle your to-do list or um, tackle your desktop folders or your, you know, putting things on um, from the cloud or from the drive into, into other folders so that they're a little bit more organized. The more you can set up systems in place, and at work we call them like standard operating procedures, so the more um, you can think of things as... Um, yeah, as having a system that you kind of can follow over and over and over again so you don't even have to think twice about it, the easier things will will get for you. Um, And I think right now that's what we need. We really need to figure out ways to survive, to simplify things um, so that we can feel a little less overwhelmed and and just kind of get by and find ways to make time for ourselves, make time for our families, make time for our loved ones. Yeah, that's enough. (laughs) Thanks for listening. And I will talk to you all next week. Have a good rest of the week. Thanks so much for joining me in the Grad School Fem Touring Podcast. If you liked what you heard, please rate this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or anywhere you tune in. You can also support the podcast by donating to my Patreon page, Anger page, or Venmo account, which is at Grad School Fem Touring. If you have questions or episode topics, you can contact me by sending me a DM on Instagram sending me an email to gradschoolfemtouring at gmail.com, sending me a voice message on Anchor, or sending me a message via my personal website at yvettemartinezvu.com. Until next time.